to be able to be at that place at all times. I mean, I would love to be in a state of continual prayer. Uh, I'm working on that moment by moment, but it's a tough thing to, when, you know, the saber-toothed piper <laughs> is coming at you, just, you, you better have a certain prayer, like, let me get out of here. Not like an invisible prayer. <laughs> yeah, or the invisible. There are times where we're forced you know, into prayer, yeah. But um, uh -huh. that, that's so important because it does cultivate a, a state of, of peacefulness within one, which access puts us in a parasympathetic, we're going to just relax, and, and that's the state we need to eat in, like you're talking about. When we're stressed out and they got the horror movie going on and, and people are arguing or they're just stuffing things down, we're in a sympathetic, stressed out state. And that physiology, like you're saying, the stress physiology that affects people is, is in this culture, is tremendous. And so. Well, it becomes a habit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, you're and children are growing up in an environment violence and noise where and the games game that they're stuff, allowed yeah. to play, the violence that mm -hmm. they're able to see uh, on television and even at the theaters. I'm, I'm, I'm personally shocked at what they're rating family films these days and uh, because I still see the violence. Mm -hmm. I, still, I still see the disrespect in the cartoons towards the children or mm -hmm. towards the children, towards their parents. And I'm thinking, what values are these young children mm -hmm. actually learning? But the other aspect of, of that type of exposure in life and the general public is also this question that I have about the immune system. We are being challenged by the lack of really healthy food. Uh, we have to really look uh, and read labels to find that healthy food. Wouldn't you say that's why, um, when I was growing up, I don't remember seeing a fat person. The fat person was, you know, the exception. Now, the thin person's the exception. I think part of that is what is saying is the food that being put out there. If it well, doesn't... We're not reading labels. Not reading labels. Well, well I do, but most people... But it's frustrating. It's just, it's, I'm overwhelmed. I mean, we had you on the show because we are exploring. We want to learn how to heal and be healthy. But I think the average person is so used to wait until you're sick and then go to a doctor. So how do you make them become aware that they need to start, like you said, taking responsibility for their health right now? It's up to them to to, to keep their health. It's not for them to get sick and then go to a doctor when it's all falling apart. Well, we're talking about the immune system. Well, yeah, but, but how do we make That's people aware? Yeah. Well, a little common sense goes a long way. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. Think about it. If, if it's not in the soil, it's not <laughs> going to be in the plant. If it's yeah. not in the plant, yeah. it's not going to be in the animal. Yeah. And if one is consuming products, let's say animal products, for instance, and um, that animal has been shot up with antibiotics and growth hormones, um, it's not a really healthy animal. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be putting that into your body if you have choices? You know, here in, in the Portland area, we're really fortunate. I mean, we're there's blessed. a lot of wonderful b stores where we're one blessed. can go. Mm -hmm. You know, um, new seasons like stores where you can, and and all of the the wonderful markets that, that you can go with neighborhood markets where the farmers markets, the, the yeah. farmer markets where people yeah. are bringing in organic produce. So it has to be in the soil in yeah. order for the plant. And, and you don't want the pesticides and herbicides mm -hmm. and fungicides and all and that. And if it doesn't rot, maybe you shouldn't eat it. Exactly. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, <laughs> Well, that's what I heard. If it's not rot, if it's something that won't rot, it's... Yeah, well, that's... A hostess Twinkie maybe, will, will oh, last you oh, 30 years in your cabinet. Except <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day, except maybe for beans and lentils. I think, you know, dried stuff won't rot. But, yeah. but basically, it's not, it's not living. It has no life force energy in it. The same thing, since we're on food, is microwaves. People are microwaving yeah, that's true. the, the uh, life force energy out of food. Mm -hmm. After all these years and all the education about Teflon... Yeah and microwaves, mm -hmm. you still will see so many people that don't know uh, and don't have this information. And I went to visit a friend who's retired and I was helping her put some food together and I opened up her pan drawer and it was Teflon. I went, oh! <laughs> <laughs> I emptied the drawer and oh. literally uh, helped her come to a, especially when it's scraped, and yeah, those oh, particles, yeah, we're talking that's about a, a, a cancer you've broken the barrier. <laughs> yeah. So. I use microwaves uh, regularly. You do? Just to heat my plates. 
Oh, did he just play? So, <laughs> what? <laughs> I believe I know, you. If <laughs> anything, I'm going to put in my mouth as far as the food goes. On the plate, I, yeah. I just warm the plates up, you know. <laughs> Are you kidding? Is this <laughs> That's the only reason I... Oh, okay. Like Somebody it. said, oh. you know, I use it for my tea water and I use it oh, for my God. coffee. They're not British if they're... I'm sorry, but <laughs> well, you the, boil water for tea. The idea is, is it breaks down the water molecule. Exactly. And the crystal structure. Oh. Yes, and I just think that you know the kids need to understand this yes it was convenient for a while we all started off going yay microwave uh -huh. until we really learned how serious it is and the EMFs that are mm -hmm. coming off of that microwave are mm -hmm. very serious and especially if it's old and it leaks oh mm -hmm. yeah and you've got a serious problem and you may not I'm even I'm getting know depressed, it. I'll tell well, you right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it all comes down, like Dave said, to education. Yeah, it's, it's education. education. And, and people uh, taking the initiative to people learn taking, what they need That's to, right. Need people to have to want to be healthy. They have to want to do this. And it takes work. Anything that's important takes work. So yeah. listen up, folks. We're giving you some You mentioned reading, reading food labels. And food of labels, course, yeah. Labeling's pretty good. Uh -huh. uh, you can get online, and, and, and there's a, uh, a couple of websites that teach you how to read the darn things. You uh -huh. need a dictionary to read the type of words. There, mm, yeah. uh, half of them uh, they change them, especially if they are of a uh, sort of a uh, negative for the body. All of a sudden, the food companies find out that people are getting educated on this, and they turn around and they change the name. But you'll find the labels. You're going to find that on cans or, or boxes of processed foods. So again, get back common sense. Mm -hmm. If you want to be healthy, eat vital eat fresh. nutrients eat alive. that, that yeah. are alive and have food. nutrients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it's if if you have to have a PhD in biochemistry to understand what it is, then it's probably not something you want yeah. in your body because it's synthetic. And and you're right. They disguise. Like, you know, instead of just putting MSG on there, a lot of people are, are, are uh, sensitive to that. You know, they'll disguise that in a hundred different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, you could actually go to a restaurant yeah, and you true. can say, I don't want any uh, MSG in, in my soup or my food. And what people don't know is that they have prepared this food ahead of time. And unless you know them uh, to, be, uh, to be, have a lot of integrity, you still have that additive in your food. Right. And that's happened several <clears throat> different times to some friends of mine who are allergic. Mm. And so you don't always know. And that's know. dangerous. You could die. So, I mean, it's nice to eat out, but you've got to be careful. You really, you well, really do. I, I think you can. There's still fabulous There's restaurants in this yeah. city, I tell you, wow. and healthy restaurants. Yeah. And, uh, you just have the biggest to be mortality statistics are, are actually related to quantity of food, more quantity than of food. too much food. And then there's uh -huh. the level of quality, which is right. real, and there's research showing that organic foods well, have much more nutritional value. Aren't there things in prepared foods that make you hungry, though? Aren't there additives that you talk about? MSG is one of them. Quantity. MSG is one of them. No, yeah, the chemicals. We say in our clinic, you like know, if you can't read the label, yeah. it's Don't eat it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so Michael Pollan in one of his New York Times uh, articles really said it well. You know, because you have all this, he, he called all this fragmented understanding of nutrition. You know, you need so many grams of yes. this. And, uh, nutritionism. And he said, wait a minute, let's cut to the chase here. Eat real food, mm -hmm. not too much, mainly plants. Mm -hmm. And if you're eating real food, you're going to have nutrients so you won't be, as, uh, you won't be starving. Exactly. Uh, if you can eat a large yeah, meal of, of processed food mm -hmm. that has no mm -hmm. real nutri mm -hmm. nutritional value, yeah. and you're still hungry. Mm -hmm. and so so I, don't think, I think food's pretty, eating. of all of them, I think food's a pretty simple one. I mean, as far as we're talking about food, we're talking about stress, we're talking about emotions, I find that managing stress and emotions, for me anyway, is harder. I can be smart enough and, you know, eat live food and pay more attention to what I eat. But those other issues, like how do you manage stress in your life because that's a big issue for your health. This is, uh, this is difficult and by the time a, a broken down patient presents him or herself to, to Dr. John or to Dave or to myself in our practices, many of them, uh, the stress response mechanism has, has, has bottomed and they really do need mm -hmm. help. Doesn't it like produce cortisol and things like well, that and all those the, chemicals? The adrenal glands uh, adrenal that are glands, located on yeah. top mm -hmm. of our kidneys, they're about the, the size mm -hmm. of walnuts, produce hormones which miraculously and, and mag seemingly magically neutralize our, 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 our stress responses. They modulate 
our, our, our responses to things so that we don't hurt ourselves and don't get hurt. Otherwise, you know, just running here to get to the studio, I'd be all bruised and banged up if it weren't for those beautiful stress hormones that quell the natural inflammation. But when that breaks down, mm -hmm. you've got problems and you're really tired, and it's difficult to just uh, mobilize your will and heal, and, and I think people need help.